Well, it's 2017, and that means that it's time for New Year's resolutions. This year, I resolve to be more loving towards keyboard jihadis. Unfortunately, when Westerners hear that I've decided to be more loving, they assume that I've decided to be nicer because they've come to equate love with niceness. But I don't. Love often involves being nice, but the demands of love depend on the situation. Let me give you an example. This is a video someone sent me recently. The video is titled, A Christmas Gift. It's a Christmas gift for me. So a guy goes to a hardware store and checks out various tools. He checks out an axe, a pickaxe, a giant rubber mallet, a brush hook, a mini sledge, and finally, he finds a ball-peen hammer. He buys the ball-peen hammer, wraps it up, and sends it to me. Glad to see yet another Muslim celebrating Christmas. Now, I spend quite a bit of time getting inside people's heads, and there's a reason for it. Keyboard jihadis and actual jihadis are going to spend their time targeting someone. The more you get inside their heads, the more time they'll focus on you, and the less time they'll spend going after other people. But there are different kinds of keyboard jihadis. Some of them are so sick and depraved that there doesn't seem to be any point in responding to them. For instance, a few months ago, I recorded a video about a Muslim saying that he's going to laugh and celebrate when my disabled children die. A Muslim who goes by the name Anonymous posted this response to my video. Ha ha ha, David Wood, really, you're in hell in this world. Cheap children, put your penis in their mouth. They will be okay. Enjoy. So here's a Muslim telling me to put my penis into the mouths of disabled children. For some reason, I still find it surprising when a man who believes in a prophet who put his penis inside of a nine-year-old girl advocates molesting children. If you go to Anonymous's channel, you'll see that he's a huge fan of Zakir Naik and Ahmed Didat and Khalid Yasin and Jamal Badawi and Yusuf Estes and Shabir Ali and so on. Now, Muslim apologists generally wouldn't support the sort of messages Anonymous sends, although I think Muhammad might have been okay with Anonymous's message. Muhammad, after all, once told his followers, if anyone proudly asserts his descent in the manner of the pre-Islamic people, tell him to bite his father's penis and do not use a euphemism. So Muhammad ordered his followers to use shocking and offensive language when addressing unbelievers. But most Muslims live better lives than this. Some, however, don't. If Anonymous hasn't learned basic human decency from the thousands of Muslim apologetics videos he's watched, what could I possibly accomplish by responding? Clearly, I'm already firmly embedded in this guy's head, and all of his apologists combined can't drown out my voice. So there's just no point in responding to him. For other keyboard jihadis, taunting them when they post death threats sends them into a rage. And once they're hooked, they just can't stay away. Muhammad Ali writes, You mother censored. You stupid mother censored. You don't talk about Islam like this. You are a pace of censored. Get a life you will burn in hall. You mother son of a censored. If I will see you, I will kill you. So I reply, If you see me, you'll kill me. You've already seen me in several videos today. I knew this because he commented on multiple videos. And you'll see me in even more tomorrow, because you can't stop watching. As a reward for your faithful viewing, I'll give you a shout out in my next video. When you start itching for an autograph, I'm not hard to find, since I give regular presentations on your wannabe prophet. How you doing, Muhammad Ali? I know you're watching, because I'm like crack for keyboard jihadis. Now, sometimes you don't just want to taunt keyboard jihadis. You want to use the opportunity that their death threat creates to convey some sort of information. For example, Aisha Zamir writes, When you don't agree with the Quran, so just shut the censored up, leave the Muslims alone for stupid peoples like you. Terrorism is spreading all over. You are asking for it. 
Nobody would want to get ridiculous. So why are you putting oil in the fire? Do you want to get your censored bomb? I say we Muslims should look for you and bomb your entire family. I wish I could be where you are right now. Certainly, I would put a bomb in your F word. Actually, censored by her. Censored. And I respond. Hi, Aisha. Were you named after Muhammad's child bride, who was only nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her? It was easy for a manipulator like Muhammad to control Aisha, since he controlled her father Abu Bakr. But why would a young woman in the 21st century continue to be controlled by Muhammad? You even threatened to bomb the families of the people who are trying to set you free. Do you really think that God wants you to go around blowing people up for telling you the truth? Here you're trying to make someone think, and as the conversation continues, Aisha admits that she believes that Muslim women are half as intelligent as Muslim men. By bringing these things to the surface, you hope that at some point they'll learn to think critically. So those are the standard keyboard jihadis, but there are some additional personality types that require a modified approach. For instance, there are the stalker personality types. These are the ones who cyber stalk you. They make fake names so they can follow your family and friends on Facebook. They're totally obsessed with knowing what you're doing at every moment. The best thing you can do with the stalker keyboard jihadis is completely ignore them. Don't even acknowledge their existence apart from blocking them. And this isn't to avoid them. And it's not because they're utterly depraved, as with the devout Muslim who told me to sodomize my children. You ignore the stalker types because if someone is obsessed with getting your attention and you ignore him, you're in his head for life. He'll never be able to think about anything else. He will dedicate his life to making you notice him, and he'll convince all of his friends to help stalk you as well. So you can protect a lot of people from harassment by getting inside the heads. Of stalker keyboard jihadis. Now, obviously, the guy who made the Christmas gift video is a stalker, and I would normally ignore a stalker and quietly giggle at the tantrums he throws. But again, I've resolved to be more loving, and I can't help but remember that this guy did make me a Christmas gift. Since this may be the first Christmas this stalker keyboard jihadi has ever celebrated, I feel like I should be generous and make an exception in this case. But I can't send him a gift because I don't know who he is, so I thought I'd just sing a few lines of a song to the jihadi cyber stalker who made me a Christmas present. This one's for you. When you woke up this morning, I was in your head, and I was in your head. You got trouble, it's me. You got worries, all me. You got wounds to bind, and I'm talking about psychological wounds caused by the teachings of the most obvious false prophet in history. It's a brave new year, keyboard jihadis, and I'm going to help you bind up those wounds. But I understand how difficult it is getting through to you. I understand that the most loving thing I can do for you is to relentlessly expose your prophet until you realize that he's a false prophet. Because until you realize that he's a false prophet, you'll never bother to seek the truth. So I'm done playing patty cake with your prophet. Playtime's over. For my Christmas present this year, 2017, all I want is to sit here on December 25th. And look back at all of the Muslims who left Islam between now and then. Got some devastating new material for you, so stay tuned. Happy New Year.